Hi, uh, Data Matson here. Um, I'm with you here today to do something completely new to me. Uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, do a unboxing video, right? So many of you might have seen that I've ordered one of these uh, HP ProLiant micro servers, uh, the new Gen 10 Plus, right? And it's been sitting on my floor here because there's been other things going on <laughs> the last few weeks, to say the least. And uh, so what I'm going to do, do here is basically unbox this thing um, and see what it looks like. Uh, I also have a few other things here, bits and pieces that I ordered. Uh, I'm probably going to write a blog about uh, how this all came together at one point. But uh, I do ha have here a um, small form factor converter kit. Um, this is to basic, be able to mount a 2.5 inch SSD in one of the 3.5 inch slots. Uh, I also got uh, a one terabyte uh, SSD drive, SK Hynix um, Gold S31 SSD. Uh, I also got a extra RAM stick. Uh, default, it comes with the, I wouldn't say default, but this particular model I ordered comes with the 16 gig. Uh, maximum is 32 gigs, so I got an another stick there. Uh, to up the memory to 32 gigs. Uh, I also got a, a USB stick um, to put, um, to basically just be able to install an operating system and boot up and so forth. Um, the end game for this server is actually gonna run Ubuntu 20, uh, 2004, which hasn't even been released yet, right? So I'm I'm kind of in, in, in various phases of uh, where I wanna, what I eventually wanna do with this box. Uh, <clears throat> I also got the um, uh, microserver ILO enablement kit. Uh, so this will basically be able to connect to HP InfoSight and I will have my own AI for my home server. So um, that's probably a world's first. Um, you might have, you might guess what uh, I paid for this whole thing here. And uh, I did, Pay this out of my own pocket. I paid around a grand for the whole thing, uh, all the pieces here. Uh, and this is not just your like flimsy ITX kind of box. This is a proper ProLiant server for the home, right? And it's designed for a lot of different use cases. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because I'm not trying to sell you this in any way. Uh, I, I'm just a big fan of the form factor. Uh, I'm also a very big fan of all the capabilities that you get. You get a C on, you get ECC memory and, and all those things that I want, right? So let's uh, crack this open here. I got a scissor to cut with. Uh, I should probably have been a little bit more professional with my choice of tools here, but I honestly don't really care. <clears throat> So hopefully there's actually a box in here. Uh, there is something. All right, it's very well packaged. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, let's make sure that you can see here. All right, we got some foam here. Let's get rid of the foam. Oh, wow. It's actually tinier than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, and there's a compartment here with some stuff. What's this? Yeah, so this it actually has a uh, external power supply, and I know a lot of people have issues with that. Uh, I'm one of those people that don't have any issues with that. So um, I will just hide this underneath uh, the desk somewhere, or clamp it to. Uh... Let me get rid of some stuff here. Uh... All right, what is this stored here? information is yeah there's some documentation i might want to read through that um, yeah this is just a, a standard power brick as far as i can tell i mean kind of looks like a power brick for a high-end uh, laptop uh, i would say yeah get one of these like round plugs and it's a standard three prong there uh, i guess this is how many watts do we have here uh, I can't find that number now. Jesus, that was a little tiny text. I read somewhere it's gonna. There's like a, a 180 watts or some something like that. Yeah, take okay, that compartment is empty. 
Uh, Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the floor and lift it out. <clears throat> All right, here we go. This is a sturdy little piece, I can tell you. It's wrapped in plastics. Um, got a little anti-moisturizer kind of thing there. All right, let's get that one out. Some pebbles. <clears throat> Plastic out. All right. So what have we got here? Um, yeah, let's yeah, let's look at the front here first. Yeah, it will probably be a bit trippy with the green screen there, but you got two USB ports in the front. It's a power button and some and some lights and a label. That's it. Um, so the difference from this one and the previous Gen 10 was the that the um, uh, the previous Gen 10 was a little bit taller. Uh, it had the drives in a different orientation. Uh, I think you had the option of um, uh, putting in a CD uh, CD drive in there and things like that. And, and I, uh, to be honest, I, I was on the fence for a very long time. Uh, I was also a big fan of the the Gen 8 as well because you can kind of like personalize the the bezel on it by in a in like green and red and yellow and whatnot, right? But uh, I've held off for a while, but right now um, uh, I, I wanted a project because I'm waiting for a, another kind of PC build for all the parts to come together. Uh, so this will fit me just perfectly. Yeah, so let's uh, go through the ports on the back here. So <clears throat> there's uh, four USB ports. There's one display port, there's one VGA port, and there's four, one gigabit ethernet ports. And there's also the power, uh, the little round socket there for the power plug. And there's two uh, PCIe slots as well. And one is dedicated for the ILO. Uh, the other one is so you can put in like a half height uh, PCIe card. Uh, and I read actually, there, it, it's a full PCIe 3.0 16X slot, right? So you can put like a gigabit, uh, Ethernet adapter in the a 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter or higher even uh, you can put a high performance uh, GPU in there not that high because most GPUs are actually full height but you kind of get the idea and what it is kind of looks like thumb screws here right uh, yeah should I read the manual how to open this thing or not yeah let's look you know this. it doesn't say anything uh, other than um, I'm not allowed to export this to China because of the TPM ship. Um, but luckily for me, I, I have a screwdriver here. So I'm, I'm going to see if I can yank these um, screws out. And it seems to be like a flat. Let's do that. That was too wide. Yeah, I guess you can't see what I'm doing in the back here, but... Um, it's nothing that exciting until I get the cover off. Uh, and I also need to find the right size bit here. There's a, well, there's a Torx as well. Let's see if that one works. Yeah, that won't fit. Let's do that. Yeah, so it's both like a flat screwdriver and a Torx. It kind of looks a little bit funny. Yeah, it came loose pretty easily, but you can kind of see that it's like it's both both flat and it works. Yeah, you won't focus on that one. Yeah, never mind. All right, put that aside here. Let's see. So it is basically just two thumb screws. They were tightened a bit harder than just. So let's me see if I. Oh, yeah. Could just slide it off like that. All right, this is a uh, pretty sturdy metal. Uh, what can we see in here? All right, so 
there is you can see the drive cage uh i don't know how to actually oh look at that there's some there's some thumb screws on it or little thumb latches yeah so there is actually a uh, you can see there's a label here this is, it says uh, bezel internal locks so there's some thumb uh, latches there that you can push that probably pulls off the front uh, what we can see here is the the full uh, 16x PCIe slot there's the ILO card is a little tiny little uh, looks like a 1x PCIe slot uh, there's nothing more interesting on this side here you can see that yeah there's the connectivity to the drives um, on this side here we can see the uh, the extra ram slot there that i'm going to put my uh, ram in and it also has a uh, internal usb port as well here so you can actually uh, permanently have a a, a a boot device inside a unit which is uh, quite nice uh, i was actually considering that uh, as a boot drive but somehow i quite didn't quite trust I don't quite trust booting and running your operating system from my USB drive. I'm a little bit old school like that. Uh, and the thing is that uh, what I'm going to put in this eventually is a three disc uh, CFS pool, which will fit perfectly along with uh, with a standard two and a half inch uh, SSD, right? So let me see if I can just. All right, so that just clicks, and uh, let me see if I can get this off here. All right, so what's what's the code after that? So they, it's unlocked now. <clears throat> <clears throat> it didn't say anything more than that. Oh, yeah, it kind of snaps off. Uh, it kind of unlocks like that. Uh, all right, so this is quite neat, actually. Uh, there is a, it's actually a little dust filter in the, in the grill here. Uh, which uh, is quite neat actually because we all know how much uh, these things pieces in general suck dust and what we have here is uh, is the uh, four drive uh, cage slot and um, one, one of the neat things I kind of like with with the design of these slots is that while they're not enti entirely screw and toolless, they you have the screws that sit on the front here, right? Uh, and you just unscrew them here and you put them on your hard drives. Uh, and that will allow you to um, just slide the, the, the drive in using the uh, the screws as a, as a guide, which is quite neat. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna start with, let's just start with that and uh, put in the, um, uh, the drive cage here. So the thing is, I you, I kind of wonder if you can use any other, because I had a bunch of converters uh, from from three and a half inch to two and a half inch, but I couldn't really. I, I didn't want to take my chances if it wouldn't work, so I, I kind of ordered the right thing. Uh, I think this was like fifteen bucks or something like that, so I I couldn't really care that much about the. Uh, price tag um, yeah there's some screws for drive there warranty information and yeah so this seems to be just like a one piece metal yeah it's just a one piece metal cage here uh, and it also has some uh, plastic film here where you can so even if you have an uh, and a dry with the with an exposed underneath it it won't short uh, against the cage uh, which is quite nice i don't know if they make ssd like that anymore but anyway there's that <clears throat> so let's see let me unc uncork my um, ssd here should have had a little more professional knife to do this with I apologize this is my first uh, unboxing video so uh, please bear with me uh, all right that's wrapped 
wrapped in some anti-static film here. Um, I have some ground here I'm gonna just touch here. There we go. Yeah, so this dryer does not have any exposed pieces underneath itself here, so, uh, but some drives have. This is actually a leaf thin little drive here. And you might uh, wonder why I cho chose this particular drive. And it was simply, I basically did a five minute Google search for um, SSD drives that were sort of not in a high range, not a, a budget consumer drive and sort of in the mid range. And, and this had fairly good reviews uh, in a number of different sites. So I, I just simply just got this one. So hopefully it will perform well enough. I'm not, I'm not going to use, I, I don't need that much performance. I will have a bunch of VMs running on it and, and, and God knows what, right? Uh, but it won't be any extraordinary. So this is a little bit tricky here. So there, there's like little notches here where you need to kind of fit the drive in, in the screw holes and kind of snap it into place. So let me see if I can get this right. All right, so now it's in the screw holes there and it should just like, I don't want to force it down. That's, yeah. This is not the best construction. Uh, you should, you, you basically need like a millimeter for this to kind of just like slide in. Just, just about, I'm gonna. No, I don't like that. I don't like bending my new SSD drive. Let me see. If, yeah, okay, let's see the problem. That little thing that it's kind of resting against here, it's not perfectly 90 degrees. I'm just gonna thumb that back like half a millimeter. I'm gonna do that one as well, half a millimeter. See if it fits better. Yeah, this is a bit finicky. Yeah, there we go. Fit perfectly. All right, so uh, you can see the ports are getting exposed in the back there. There's a little hole there. Um, so you should probably be able to just slide it in there. Uh, I did have, did get some screws. Let me do that. All right. Where'd my screwdriver go? I need a little... Yeah, I should have prepared with more tools. I thought I could just do this with a multi-bit screwdriver. And so far I'm doing all right. Uh, there we go. Oh, no, 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 that was... Huh, that's a Torx as well. Look at that. This is like a, the tiniest screw you can ever find, right? And they managed to put a Torx head in it. And it's a different size Torx head. So this is going to be funny. Oh man, I don't have that in there. Yeah, obviously you need more tools than I had brought up here. All right, uh, what I'm going to have to do is uh, I'm going to go run uh, and pick some bits up. So stay tuned. I'll be back in a second. All right, uh, I'm back. Let's let's see what we got here. So I have one of these sets that has like every weird bit under the sun. Uh, I should have a Torx bit that fit this particular screw, yes. <coughs> so the size says CRVT10. That's what you're looking for. There we go. So 
So you fit these screws from the underside. Just snug enough. There we go. In my adolescence, I usually just put three hard drive screws in because that was quicker to build PCs. Um, I haven't built a PC in well over six, seven years now. Um, the one I have as my workstation, my workhorse, uh, I built that uh, a very long time ago. Um, it's a really nice 2640 Xeon with the 128 gigs of RAM and it's, it's been uh, doing a very good job ever since. All right, so <clears throat> the next step here, uh, let me, uh, so to be able to slide this into the drive cages here, oh, I wanna see if they're numbered. Yeah, so there is a little, yeah, the, the drive slots are numbered, right? So there's a little etching in the very, in the very far back, you can barely see it. Yeah, it, there's a little number there. So the upper left one is number one. The lower left one is number two. Upper right is number three. Lower right is number four. So, all right. Uh, now I need the big uh, size Torx, which I had on this particular screwdriver. <clears throat> and uh, I simply need to all right so i need three screws for this actually so there's there's like screws on the side here uh, where you put the you unscrew the, the screws in the front here and put in those and i just happened to know that because when i while i was doing research i think i was doing research on the gen 8 i was really interested in the drive configuration so i did some reading on it and i couldn't figure out the drive cages and then i just saw a and the picture is just like why all, all, all those screws in the front there and they've sort of adapted the same concept on these so that's easy enough but i mean to my uh, original kind of question and thought i had on the drive cage i think that actually any any drive cage would fit uh, and uh, i might do you that favor and check if um, anyone wants that um, because i actually bought a corsair uh, dry cage, cage just in case if i couldn't get rid of this but i couldn't, couldn't get hold of this all right so there's little latches as well oh wow they kind of spring uh, in the front here so these latches here uh just unthumb them and you should be able to just slide it in there we go yeah it clicks right in place really really snug and really nice and i have that in uh, slot number one now uh, all right so what else do i have here yeah so i have an, a, the ilo card um so the funny thing is I don't have enough network ports on my home switch at the moment uh, to actually um, have both LAN and ILO connected at the same time. So I need to fix that before I demonstrate the ILO. So this will probably be like a multi-series of videos where I demonstrate some of the capabilities and various stages of this build because uh, I'm not going to finish it all tonight. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put everything together. I'm going to power it up uh, and you will see how, how what it looks like when it comes on. And uh, I will boot a uh, live USB stick and uh, we'll just kind of go over the inventory of the hardware and see that everything kind of works and we'll probably wrap it up after that. Uh, because after that, I'll, I'm going to turn this into a folding at home um, uh, number crunching for the COVID-19 project. And that is why it, it's pressing for this to kind of come up fairly soon. All right. So 
The bracket in the back here uh, was also standard, the, the standard torque screw that I got here. The, this one sl slid out um, pretty pretty easily. And uh, let's figure, oh wow, how am I, this core gonna slide in here? So I wonder if you need to remove things here to get that cord in there. That's all right. So there are some instructions here. Uh, huh, wow, so there's like system board removal. That is neat, so let's do that. Let's see what, what that is. So there's, there's like two black screws here in the back. Um, right there and right there. And from the instructions here, it seems that you unscrew those two and you should be able to slide this thing out. So let's do that, let's uh, clear up this mess here. And see what that looks like. because I need to pull it out to be able to fit the idle board in there. I, I don't know how otherwise I would be able to fit that in there. So let's uh, unscrew this here. There we go. Those screws are black, so they're different from the other ones. They actually, no, they're just black. They just look exactly the same. So according to the instructions here, I should just be able to pull this out. Let's, oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's laid out really easily. All right, so the thing is that, yeah, there is cabling here. Uh, I can totally see that. Yeah, so there is like the SATA cable, as I'm, yeah, the power cabling and all that kind of sits, sits in the front here. So I don't think you're supposed to pull it, pull it all out. You, you just want to kind of pull it out so you get access to all the components here. And you can see that the, um, Oh, this is pretty neat actually. Uh, let me see if, oh, before I can pull it out. I made a mess on my desk here already. Uh, all right, so there we go. Okay, so that's pretty neat. So you can actually pull it out nearly all the way here without breaking anything. So that's, that's quite neat actually. So you can see here there's a very uh, large kind of passive cooler here. Uh, and then you can see there's heat pipes going up to the fan that has been kind of angled uh, in the back here. So there's like one system fan and I certainly hope that's a quiet fan because I don't like loud fans. And now when you kind of pull it out like this, you have like access to everything, right? The PCIe slot, the ILO slot, the memory slot, the USB uh, slot there and so forth. So. It looks good and there's also some instructions if you want to uh, remove the heat sink there what else do we have here that's interesting there's a battery it's a panasonic battery uh, with a lot of fingerprints on it so <clears throat> let's uh, all right so what, what do we want to do in here yeah ILO board okay yeah, so this kind of one is, wants to come down at a little bit of an angle here. And then you get it into 90 degrees and it slides, clicks in like snug as a bug in a rug. Uh, you get the um, torque screw back here. All right, there we go, oops. Yeah, this, this screwdriver is really flimsy. So there we go. Yeah, and the ILO board is so, the thing is that it actually comes with an ILO chip already, uh, right? Uh, so you can kind of manage, you, you can access the ILO functions locally on the, uh, from the host operating system uh, in band, so to speak, right? Uh, but if you want to be able to do like remote desktop and, and all those things, you, you definitely need, um, uh, a, a network access to the to the to the system, so you can do like power cycle, uh, access the remote uh, remote KVM essentially, and things like that. So, and I'm really curious about how that works because I so this has an ILO five chip on it, and that is actually fairly new to me. Uh, I have not used. ILO five. I actually have a bunch of servers in in the office that has ILO five, but I haven't. <laughs> I haven't even configured them. I'm a bit ashamed about that, but 
it's supposed to be very high performant and be quite usable from from a remote kvm perspective so um i gotta look forward to trying that out all right the black screws came back just uh, to get the, the the whole system unit kind of snug there uh, of course i forgot to put in uh, my ram stick uh, but maybe i can do a bit of a no i cannot yeah so look at that i wonder if i'm going to cut this in the final version or not well this is kind of the the types of things i do all the time right i'm just just go jumping ahead of myself uh, but this is like live tv nothing is going to be cut out so yeah there we go so now we can access the, the the ram because you need to open the latches here to be able to put the ram stick down so let's see. <coughs> yeah so i'm going to put up the port numbers and and all that stuff in our blog at one point uh, or i'll probably embed this video in our blog to be honest and put the yeah, let me just get my scissors out here so there is actually a um HPE sealed RAM stick and uh, please use uh, official RAM because you don't want your RAM to fail and you want it to be compatible with the um, uh, with the with the RAM that's in the server so you want to have identical compatible memory. Uh, these packages has kind of been melted together. It's really finicky to kind of cut and open this. Be gone, scissor, be gone. There we go, and I should be able to access that now without touching any components. Just gonna ground myself here. There we go. I don't have any carpets in my house, so I didn't get any charge. There we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see here. There we go. Click. I should probably hold it there. Click. All right, I should now have 32 gigs of RAM. <clears throat> Apparently there are uh, 32 gig sticks available. Uh, somebody asked that in one of the other blogs on, on this uh, microserver and uh, I, I strongly recommend you if you want to kind of, if you're interested in like all the specs and all the little details and like high-res photos and stuff like that. I would recommend you go to servethehome.com and search for this uh, Gen 10 Plus review there. It's very elaborate and they might, uh, yeah, so they were supposed to do some benchmark, uh, benchmarks on it as well and then compare it to the other uh, microservers and such. Uh, so that could be quite interesting. I don't know if they completed and compiled that uh, just yet. So is there anything else here that I want to put in here? There's not. I'm just going to throw that out. Uh, I want to put the bezel back here. Um, and I guess, yeah, there's little hooks here. So um, I'm, I'm going to put the bezel on the front. Let's do that. Let's put the bezel on the front. Perfect. And I'm going to put uh, three more drives in here uh, at one point, but uh, I'm currently using them in my in my desktop computer. So um, I will probably do that at a little later date. Okay. And you kind of just like snap that on and use those latches there and it's uh, snug and fit there. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, this is this is like re a really sturdy construction. Uh, I must I must say. Um, so I was a enthusiast building 
per, like DVRs, like dig digital DVRs with Linux and did a lot of research on, on chassis like these. Um, oh, look at that. I've actually put one of the screws in the wrong socket. Jesus. Yeah, well, this is live TV. This is. Yeah, so I was really interested for, for a very long time in like, how can you build a small, powerful PC? And I bought a lot of small, weird chassis that they were like really flimsy and was components didn't quite fit right. And it was just, it was a, a horrible, horrible mess, right? But um, this is nothing like it. The thing is that it kind of, one thing that kind of, strikes me is that it, it is sort of like all right so it's not like super small uh but it's not super big either i, th I just think that this is like if you want to have a home server with four drives in it and a, and a and a Xeon cpu with 32 gigs of ram and still have options to expand it i think this is probably the form factor that you're looking for <clears throat> all right so um what I'm gonna do here, I need to rearrange uh, a few things here, uh, and uh, I'm gonna put the power in. Uh, I managed to find a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, I'm gonna hook this up and I'm gonna start it up and basically see what happens. So uh, bear with me and uh, see you in, in one second. All right, uh, we're back. Uh, I just uh, powered on the, uh, the Gen 10 Plus here. And I had to rearrange my cameras and uh, somehow the um, capture card uh, was not compatible with the with the output of the display port but uh, so we had to revert to some uh, old analog <laughs> way of show, showing things here so this doesn't look very uh, interesting uh, we're just booting up here you can see the fan coming up uh, coming on here it's quite noisy, but uh, it, that is just during the boot process here. So what I want to do here, I want to go into the system utilities. That's F9. I'm covering the screen now. It's not very clever of me, but you, you press F9 and you go into the BIOS. I just want to make sure that everything I installed is uh, working and uh, it's detected and so forth. All right, uh, let's see here. Yes, yeah, so we want to go to uh, system information. Summary. Yeah, we can clearly see that uh, 30, I have my 32 gigs there. There are my two 16 gig sticks are working and detected. Um, I also installed a hard drive. I want to see if that is in there as well storage device yes there's my one terabyte drive so i'm going to start uh boot this up here and uh, uh, resume normal boot now i want to boot on a usb stick oh there we go so um i also booted up uh, prior to starting here and um, Somehow the uh, default uh, try Ubuntu without installing is not working. Uh, so it only works booting into safe graphics and uh, I will figure it out uh, later why it's not doing that. But let's uh, kick that off. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. Somehow I'm very impressed that uh, the Hulu Packard Enterprise logo is part of the boot screen here. Uh, I have no idea where that is being picked up because what I'm booting off now is a daily build from Ubuntu 20.04 and uh, somehow maybe it's detecting the, the hardware of the server that is a uh, HPE server and that's why it displays that logo. <clears throat> So right now it's actually booting off the USB stick uh, that I created. Um, let me see. Oh, I got a mouse as well working. Yeah, there we go. 
Yeah, I really apologize for the bad picture quality here, but I had to resort to an old uh, USB cam um, that I had to get this to work. So what I want to do here is just simply install uh, install a Neo Fetch and kind of show the the terminal background. So I'm just going to enable the community maintain free and open source software. Yeah, the resolution is uh, very sad, unfortunately, during safe graphics, but uh, that is just what we're going to have to live with. Uh, I'm not going to have a monitor connected to this um, server, um, so I, I couldn't care less about this. Um, and if you wanted to have like graphics performance, you would probably put in a dedicated GPU for that. Uh, now I want to just start a terminal here. There we go. And uh, I want to do a up get install NeoFetch. NeoFetch just kind of shows you some basic system information. It's a, one of those things. It's the first thing I kind of run on a system. I want to figure out what, what's running on it. So there we go, NeoFetch. Yep, there we go. Uh, yeah, we're running the um, development branch of uh, Focal Fossa, which is uh, Ubuntu 20.04. You can see clearly here that we're running for Lion Microserver Gen 10 Plus. It's been up for two minutes. What else is interesting here? We have the processor here. It's detecting uh, the four cores. Uh, there's no uh, hyper-threading on this CPU, so there's four cores and that's what you get. And, and this is the troublesome uh, Matrox uh, VGA chipset that is not being uh, detected properly. <clears throat> and I need to troubleshoot that. Um, we can also see the memory here. Uh, it's my 32 gigs and uh, that's that. And we can probably also see um, that the SSD that I put in here should uh, be displayed as well yeah we can see the um, the one terabyte ssd drive there so well um that's essentially all i had uh, for this time uh, i'm gonna do some other uh, record a few other tutorials uh, on this box uh, in the coming days or weeks maybe uh, depending on what's coming up this is kind of just a little hobby thing that I do. So till next time, take care. Cheers.